Hello there and welcome to the Green at Morton weekly update as sponsored by McTears the Auctioneers. This is your chance to get behind the scenes at Capelow Park and find out what's going on. And on that note, delighted to say I'm joined by the Morton manager, David Hopkins. David, how are you? Morning, good. Great day, how are you? Ah, I'm good, 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 good. Um, bit of frustration last week with the United game being called off. I mean, the conditions were impossible. Yeah, it was a difficult one. I think we had to prepare properly. As, um, me and Dave McKinnon were in a car heading to, to Paisley to meet the bus when we get a phone call to say the game was off. So it was, I think we had a good idea it was going to be, I think, the, the weather we had last week was horrendous. And uh, as I say, it was a difficult situation, but as I say, it's, it's, it's a game we have to go and replay now. It's another midweek game and it's, it's going to be a busy schedule over the next 10 days. Yeah, you're going to have that busy schedule. There's trips away to Inverness and places as well. This is getting to the business end of the season, isn't it? Yeah, of course. I think now we're, we're going to the last 13 games. This is, we've got three away games after we play Allo on Saturday. We're away to obviously Air Tuesday, Queen of South on Saturday, and then the following Tuesday we're up at Inverness. So it's going to be a tough week. And uh, it's, but it's, a, it's a thing we have to do. I think most other teams are in the same boat. But you just say, you're coming to a business end and we need to make sure that everybody stays really focused and we've got a fairly full, uh, fit squad to choose from now. Great. I'd imagine if the players have missed out in a game, it's been a fortnight since they played, they'll be absolutely itching to get back out in the park then. Yeah, I think we've, we've managed to work hard over the last uh, week. We've, we've not had a game. Obviously, the Saturday was too late to do anything. We had to give the boys a weekend off. But they've come in Monday, Tuesday, trained really well. Also, the day off uh, yesterday, we're back in this morning again, so I'm sure they're looking forward to it. Just hopefully we can get through it, because it's going to be a tough game on Saturday. Yeah, let's talk about Saturday. Two informed teams. Aloha, quite big on the fact that they've been informed. But Morton, of course, we've had this great run since the start of the year. Yeah, I think both of us have. I think uh, Peter's done a fantastic job there. I think part-time club. I think they've been in the uh, championship uh, three years consistently. They, they, even though they get relegated, they seem to bounce straight back up again. So they've got a great infrastructure at the club. They've got a great manager. And as I say, they're doing really well. But both teams are doing really well. And probably maybe teams that maybe people in this league didn't really think would have would have done it. We've probably been doing the bottom of the league for most of the season. But just shows you in this league, if you win three, four games in, in a bounce, it, it gets you away from trouble. But you, you can't take your eye off the ball at any, any moment. It is the margins, isn't it? I mean, the margins are so tight in this division. It's one of the hardest divisions to play in, I would say. Yeah, I think it's a fantastic division. I think anybody that's either, ever managed in it or played in it knows that every every year the league goes to the end of the, the season because there's only 10 teams. Every game's got a meaning, whether it's relegation, playoffs, or somebody going to win the league. So I think you can see over the past five or six weeks some of the results in the league. Everybody's much, uh, much. And if you, if you don't do things properly in this league, you get punished. Have you got full availability then for Saturday in terms of your, your numbers? Yeah, the only one's Cameron Seltfield. Cameron's been out for probably the best part of two months now with his thigh. Uh, he started training Tuesday, which is good to see him back because his pace and his power gives us something different we don't have up front. So he's uh, probably next week before he'll be he'll be fully fit and available for selection because obviously he might need to play in the reserve game to try and get match fitness for him. Now, there's been a bit of speculation this week, as you well know, about contracts and all that sort of looking forward to, you know, the next part of the, of the season. But I mean, you're you're quite happy with what you've seen with the contracts, haven't you? Yeah, delighted. As I said, the contract situation now is is probably going to depend on finance for next year. Obviously, it's early in the season for budget wise. There'll be maybe one or two players, I think, and I don't think it's any disrespectful when you say it. Maybe younger players you'll be able to get signed up just now because obviously, your older players and your more senior players. Maybe wait until the end of the season to see what they want to do, but I'll, I'll be chatting to everybody over the, the, the coming months to make sure that uh, there, there will be some for players and really up to them because I think you're at a situation now with older players where they've got to look after families and different other things and if other clubs are interested in them. Then I've always been open with players and said that if you want to go and speak to someone else or whatever, then it's, it's totally up to them. It's interesting that because you've managed a few clubs now, so you do this at this stage of the season, you actually start projecting forward to the next season. Yeah, I think you have to. I think you have to plan for next year. I think you, you can give yourself a headache because players can also leave in the summer if they're, if they're over 23. It makes it more difficult. I've been working with players now for eight months and I want to continue that for next season. And I think that's how you get continuity in a football club. If I keep changing every year, it makes it very difficult. You just start again in the summer. So hopefully... Most of the players will resign. 
and it gives us something to build on for next year. It does because when you talk to the players, and we've interviewed quite a few of them now, every one of them goes back to this great camaraderie that's in the dressing room. Yeah, I think it takes time. I think that's the biggest thing in football. The players are so important. And uh, I've got fantastic older players who help run the dressing room. And you've got younger players who want to be here and be part of something. And I think over the past six, seven weeks, I've started to see that now that we've started to hopefully turn the corner of where we were at the beginning of the season. It was always going to be a difficult challenge when I first came into the club. But I think uh, the changes we've made at the club's positive. I think, and I think the players see that, and I think everything we do at the club is to, to try and make the players better, and I think they appreciate that. Just a quick word about the fans' forum. We understand now three quarters of the tickets have gone. I think there's only 25 left to go. It is the 9th of March. It's coming up very, very soon after this run of games, but you were looking forward to that. Yeah, I think you always are. I think it's a good opportunity for fans to ask you questions, myself and Dave, and, uh, and it's a good thing that we, we can actually project out to the fans what we're trying to do. And uh, it says, Fans forums have always, anyone I've ever done, some can be negative and some can be really positive, mm. but it's the yeah. same thing. I think once everybody airs their views and if they ask you a question, they'll get answered. And any difficult questions that we are asked, I'm sure they'll be answered in a, in a truthful and honest manner. Yeah, because I've done a few nights for you and you're always very, very candid with your responses to people. You give them the straight answer right off the bat. Of course, I think you have to. I don't think fans will buy any. If you, if you start trying to get around houses or, or try to tell them something that they don't buy into. So I think when you're honest with people and you give them an honest assessment of the question and the answer, I think usually they take that on board and really, really, I think once you have these fans' forums, I think even if you're in a bad space or a good space, I think people leave a lot of positivity. Before all that though, Allo and Saturday, thanks for coming in and joining us as always, David, and good luck. No problem, Jerry. Thank you. And thank you for joining us as well. If you want to go to the Fans Forum, as I pointed out, there are still some tickets left. You have to go into Eventbrite and register your details. But as I said to David there, there's only about 25 tickets left, so you need to get moving on this. Thanks for joining us on the Greenock Morton Weekly Update, as sponsored by McTears, the auctioneers. <laughs>